Shen Yun is nothing like an ordinary performing group. While most performing arts groups that stick to traditional techniques struggle to survive in the modern age, this New York-based classical Chinese dance group performed to 1 million people in 150 cities last year alone, selling out most shows. But what is unknown to most people is that there's a massive campaign by one of the world's most powerful regimes to take down Shen Yun by any means. The Chinese communist regime has been pressuring the world's theaters to cancel the shows, allegedly endangering the performers' lives while on tour, and launching online campaigns to smear the performance's reputation. Why would the regime be so afraid of a dance show, and so afraid of freedom of expression in the arts? And what kind of challenges does Shen Yun have to face in order to bring the history of traditional Chinese culture to the world? This special report from NTD explores these questions. Odense, Denmark is the hometown of the classic fairy tale author Hans Christian Andersen. This winter, a local theater's decision to cancel a dance show in Odense has fueled public debate over communist China's influence in the Nordic city. Has China's censorship reached the birthplace of Thumbelina and the Steadfast Tin Soldier? Local media called out the theater for allegedly submitting to Beijing's pressure. They have an uh, obligation to um, protect the freedom of speech. And if we have a, a show like the Shen Yun um, being cancelled because of the Chinese regime, we don't want to accept that in Denmark. And I Every once in a while, the classical dance show Shen Yun has experienced similar sudden cancellations since its founding. But why would communist China be so against this performance? Shen Yun was founded by practitioners of Falun Gong, a spiritual movement banned and persecuted in China. The show depicts 5,000 years of traditional Chinese culture on stage and performs at the world's top venues, Lincoln Center in New York, Kennedy Center in Washington, the London Coliseum, Incredible, bringing like, the wonders of ancient Chinese so culture to millions across the globe. This was so on point that I couldn't fault anything really. It's so powerful. Extremely professional, beautiful. They're amazing the skills. It should be a worldwide thing. I think the uh, ability to take stories that cover 5,000 years and make them come alive. The Chinese phrase Shen Yun can be translated as the beauty of divine beings dancing. And divine inspiration is at the heart of traditional Chinese culture. The idea of a connection between artists and a divine muse or source of inspiration that comes to them. These are the stories that have been a big part of Chinese culture for thousands of years. But the idea doesn't sit well with the Chinese Communist Party's Marxist and Leninist ideology, which believes in violent revolution and abandoning tradition. That's why destroying traditional culture was the party's top agenda when it came to power. Because people who have belief that there's more to life than meets the eye, that there's maybe a reincarnation, that there is a heaven or hell, that there are gods watching, that there's anything beyond what we're seeing here, why would they follow you to go do the things they did during the Cultural Revolution and go beat up their teachers and, and, and beat up their parents and burn books and destroy statues and burn down temples and destroy artwork and all these different things. Shen Yun performance include contemporary stories of how the Communist Party persecutes people of faith. The Chinese regime denies the persecution and discredits those who reveal it but it hasn't been able to stop Shen Yun. And so here we are at Lincoln Center and at Kennedy Center performing in front of congressmen and CEOs and entrepreneurs and, and people from the arts and, and in Hollywood and showing them this thing that they've been trying to hide this whole time. The communist regime often uses trade as leverage to pressure other governments to silence dissidents outside of China. They do it all the time. They do it with, with Belgium, they do it with, with the Netherlands, they do it with all European states. Uses trade to suppress the, the free speech about their own horrible regime. Denmark welcomes more than 200,000 Chinese tourists each year. Odense, the city Shen Yun was canceled this year in, is among the top three attractions for Chinese tourists in Denmark. That should not be the case inside the European Union. We have freedom of expression, freedom of art and culture. In 2017, the Royal Theatre of Denmark would not let Shen Yun perform there, saying the show doesn't meet the theatre standard. Yet an internal email between the theatre staff at the time shows that the real reason might be something else. 
One email was presented in a parliamentary hearing in Denmark. It says the embassy ended the meeting by asking if we had a dialogue with Shen Yun and requested that we shouldn't allow them to rent our facilities. The Chinese embassy and uh, delegation was actually pressuring the theater in not letting them book these facilities. In Spain, the local Chinese ambassador admitted in a phone conversation that has been recorded that he was personally involved in pressuring the theater. For years, Beijing's long arm of art censorship follows Shen Yun on tour. Theaters in the U.S., Germany, Holland, Israel and more have all felt the pressure from communist China. Some theaters dismissed the pressure and went on with the show. Some compromised. It's not that they don't know, they don't know what's right. They often tell us we're really sorry, but you know, we're a small fish in a big sea and this is China is a big shark over here. We kind of have to do what they say. In the Eastern European country of Moldova, May 23, 2010, Shenyu dancers got locked out by the theater manager with no advanced notice before the show was to begin. They didn't want to talk to us, wouldn't let us in. She said, no, I'm under orders that this performance is canceled, and we're just stuck there. Lemish later learned that the former Soviet Union member state was promised a $1 billion loan by China. You know, it's easy to connect the dots that so they promised him this. The hosting organization of the performance later sued the theater for breaching the contract. But at that moment, the dancers could do nothing other than silently protest outside, together with the audience. We actually were on the front steps of the theater. Um, facing this big uh, square that was in front of it, in the center of town, and welcoming the audience members as they came in, just standing there in our suits. After the audience members learned there's no show... And they were in tears. I mean, they would take pictures with us. They went to a flower market nearby and brought us flowers, and you can, you can see... Apart from interference targeted at theaters, Shen Yun faces other types of challenges along the way. Their touring bus's tire would suddenly be slashed. Because the way it was cut, the tire would not deflate right away, but as the tire expands on the highway at high speed, it would pop. And then you could lose control of the bus, and people could get killed. They now have people 24 hours watching Shenyun buses, but they still couldn't stop a guy from coming in the middle of the night, trying to tamper with the oil tanks. They spotted the guy and said, what are you doing? And then the guy jumped in his truck and started driving away, and eventually the police chased after him, and the guy abandoned the vehicle and ran away on foot. This tactic was used against Shen Yun multiple times. Lemish said it has happened in Ottawa, Memphis, Dallas and Atlanta. Despite the challenges, Shen Yun has grown from one touring company to seven, reaching a million audience members each year. Then the Chinese regime turned to a more modern and harder to detect approach, the Internet. If you Google Shen Yun, many of the top review articles are negative ones. Negative comments keep flooding in on Yelp, Twitter and other social media. No matter how many thousands of positive reviews we get, all these audience members being interviewed, especially on our sponsoring media, but still at the very top of the Google ranking are these negative articles. And so articles from the Chinese embassy's website also show up as one of the top results. These are not very popular websites. They don't do business, they don't have news updates. It's just, Lemme it's just said kind of either there's a problem with Google's algorithm or... But at the very least, we know there's these 50 cent people going out there. And they're Many journalists and human rights activists have been bombarded by comments and posts from the 50 cent army. Those paid by the Chinese communist regime 50 cents per post to sing its praises and attack its critics. Beijing is known for using the internet to influence public opinions both inside China and in the West. Apart from the flood of negative comments on social media, Lemish says negative changes are made on Shen Yun's Wikipedia page almost About on a daily basis. Topic. You think who's actually so motivated and has the time and the energy, who's not on salary to actually go and do this on such a large scale. And so you have these articles. But as the world gets to know more about the Chinese regime's tactics, sometimes the interference can also backfire, making the audience more curious to see the show. 
uh, because of the politics in China. Uh, so it's quite interesting to actually know all the history and, and what is exactly happening. I can't imagine anyone not of the opinion that you should spread your culture and you should show this all over the world. Which is a shame, because China is China's such a big country, but that's their, I guess it's their loss. I would like to see, it, especially now, if it, if it really is that it was cancelled because of some regime, regime in China, I would really like to go and see it. Some politicians in Australia felt the same. Lemish said one year in the capital Canberra, some audience members told him after the show... They approached us and they said, uh, you just want to introduce ourselves, we are parliament members, and uh, we love the performance. And as we got talking, we realized that there were a lot of parliament members there, and what they had in common was they all received a letter telling them not to come see the show. And so, of course, like, oh, Beijing really cares about this. What is this performance? Let's go check it out. And so they would the parliamentarians there. told him they could almost have a parliament meeting in the theatre. Human history is not short of examples of the authoritarian regime exporting censorship. In the 1930s, Nazi Germany asked the Danish government to silence critics of Nazism in Denmark's publishing world. Esperson says what the Chinese regime is doing now is the same. The comparison is obvious. That is what's happening. If you start suppressing art, this, this kind of art, you've, you've started on a very bad road. When was the last time something was so beautiful since 2006, Shen Yun has told stories of the East through dance and music, winning heartening responses from audiences worldwide. Because they are professionals, because they are very emotional, because they are uh, produce all this energy that I used to have when I go to theaters, and I feel myself fulfilled with this. They are individuals that have determination, and they above all, they have really uh, great thoughts of what life is supposed to be all about. There's something above and behind all of us that will guide all our thoughts, all of our actions, and in a way will make us connect where we are. I think there was a mystical um, energy field created in the room that we as an audience got to sort of sink into, and that must come from practitioners who are themselves, you know, radiating that quality. My heart was pounding, and as a physician, I know it wasn't wrong, but I was so excited about this. I mean, America's so 300 years old. China's 5,000 years old. So I think we maybe got quite a bit to learn. Is the gentleman who made it, uh, the artistic director, DF, the work he's done to put all this together, it really just, on a whole, makes something really special and beautiful that hits in a place that you can't really describe. But there's an emotion there that's just kind of like, wow. You know, there's something about this culture that resonates, I think, deeply in people all over the world because it's the same values and it's the same foundational idea and these principles that we're depicting on stage and th this idea of goodness and of piety and that there's a spirituality and there's maybe a, more to life than meets the eye and that the, the divine is watching even. These are things that have been around the world everywhere. And when people see the show, they reconnect with it. And that's what the Communist Party in China is afraid of.